Um, but this guy, he's so great. He's such a talented comedian. Um, you will also see him, Portland's Funniest Person Contest, at the Helium. He's also a semi-finalist. Uh, and he also has a fantastic showcase that he does monthly as well. Um, and he's also a super, super talented photographer. He's documenting Portland's comedy scene in these gorgeous black and white photos, Portland stand-up comedy. Um, definitely take the time to look that up. And now, enjoy him here. It is Jason Traeger. <laughs> Use the mic, even though probably don't need to. We're in the recording studio, right? So, uh, if you've ever spent any time in a recording studio, besides right now, um, you the one thing that's always funny. I've spent some time in recording studios in my music days, the '90s and whatnot, um, and it was always funny watching singers record a vocal track with with the headphones with the music in there and just standing and like watching them sing while they're listening to the music but you can't hear anything. It's hilarious. It's a really funny thing. So I'm gonna sing a song for you in the studio. Okay. This is my vocal take. All right. Rolling. Okay. Mama <laughs> mama yeah. Set of stand up. This is my set of Randy Dan stand up comedy. This is my stand up. I'm doing it for you. Yeah. This is my set of stand up. This is my set of Randy Dan stand up comedy. This is my stand up. I'm doing it for you. Yeah. Some people do it for glory. Some people do it just for fun. Some people gonna tell you funny stories. Some people gonna tell you a pun. Some people gonna set you up, ooh, just to hit you with a punchline. <laughs> Me, I'm just singing this song for you, for you, freaky dicky funky for the muck and bunny friends of mine, friends of mine. I think that was a keeper. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. I hope that wasn't too loud. I have my earphones on. It's kind of <laughs> my cans, I should say. I'm wearing my cans. That's a studio talk. Hi, guys. I feel very present right now. Very in the now. Kind of disconcerting. It's not how I typically spend my time. Got one head in the cans usually, and one head out here. But right now, I'm feeling very centered. It's freaking me out. Yeah, Craig, you can take my picture. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was supposed to be sly. <laughs> Craig Maley is a dumb one. Keep moving. <sighs> Jenna was talking about assholes and difference between a 20-something asshole and a 40-something asshole. I own a 40-something asshole, but I've never encountered one in a sexual relationship. <laughs> kind of swing, swing young in my life. When I was a child, I liked nothing more than Hostess Blackberry Fruit Pies. They were my absolute favorite treat. <laughs> my mom understood nutrition, and she cared about my brother and I, so she didn't let us have them very often, which only made the times we did get them that much more special. <laughs> I was a good kid, still am, but occasionally I would steal them, and I felt bad about it. I just didn't have the economic strength and you know, power to, to get them that way, so I just, that's the way I felt bad about it, and I always worried about getting caught, but I did it anyways because I just loved them so much. 
Now, if you had told me when I was a child that when I grew up to be a man, I would find Hostess Blackberry fruit pies and things like them inedible, something I wouldn't eat. <laughs> if you handed me one. But that I would take deep, abiding, life-affirming pleasure in tonguing a woman's asshole. <laughs> I have to tell you, I don't think I would have believed you. <laughs> How could I have believed in just a few short decades my life would be so radically and profoundly transformed <laughs> that literally the most wonderful thing in the world would be, Hoses Black Reef Fruit would be garbage. <laughs> and that the single most disgusting thing I could have imagined as a child, <laughs> licking a girl's butt, That'd be something that today is often the highlight of my entire week. It's like top shelf. I don't want you guys to get the impression that I'm some kind of fetishist, this is some twisted obsession of mine. It's not. The reason I like doing it is simple. It's because there's a woman in my life, a person I care about, who loves having this done to her. It's really her pleasure that's the source of my own. If I do that to her and she does a little something to herself, it's a guaranteed ticket to that place of dark surrender. That's where the rainbows collide. The fairy fire with orgasm. She has one. And as you know, the female orgasm can be elusive, a little slippery. A lot slippery if you do it right. The male orgasm, it's so ridiculously simple. It's mechanical, really, you know. Pull the buzzer a few times, ding, 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 the bus will stop, we will get off. <laughs> Female orgasm, on the other hand, it's got to be conjured. There's got to be magic in the air, pixie dust. Little vibrating butterflies flying around. And you might need to stick your face in some places. They don't typically want to pitch your face, but... Like what I'm talking about. Now, if what I'm talking about sounds repulsive to you, it needn't be if the grime of the day is washed away. It's There's no taste, it's just a texture. <laughs> It's all texture, no taste, just like a Subway sandwich. <laughs> Eat fresh, my friends. I have no problem eating fresh because I will do anything. If I'm with a woman, whatever it takes to participate in her orgasm. And that's what it is. No man gives a woman an orgasm. You participate in the collaborative art project. <laughs> artists, right? Right. You might have to suffer. You know, your arm might go numb, your jaw might start to hurt. I'll detach my jaw like a snake swallowing a toaster. If that's where, to get to where we need to go, I'll do it. Because I firmly believe with deep conviction that every time a woman achieves orgasm, the world becomes a little bit better, a lot better, a place. Yes. Go tell it on the mountain. <laughs> I like saying that because in my experience, women love hearing that said. <laughs> makes them happy, I get a guaranteed applause break, that makes me happy, we're all happy, it's win-win. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I, I really do believe that. No, I don't say any of this stuff to be shocking, that's not my deal, is not to be like, oh, I'm gonna get out here and shock people. It's like, I don't get off on shocking people. Unless you guys get off of being shocked, then we could probably work something out. <laughs> get into it, meet you halfway. <laughs> I can't imagine I could say anything shocking in the year 2014 to people. Like, you have computers in your pockets, most of you. You could be looking at pornography, the likes of which would have landed you in prison had you possessed it in some southern states back when I was eating fruit pies. <laughs> what am I gonna say to you is gonna be shocking, you know? That's not the goal. The whole point of this is actually, there's a message, and the message is don't fear the future. Don't fear the future. Like. If you, when you fear the future, inevitably what you're doing is you project who you think you are today into this scenario you're imagining, but that's not how life works, of course. You won't be in the future. Your future self will be in the future. And this future version of you might be able to handle what comes just fine. And if this future incarnation of you can't, well, that's his or her problem, right? Let them fuck them, you know? It's like, <laughs> don't have to worry about it. Someone had told me when I was a kid that I grew up to be a man who licked women's butts, I would have been very upset. <laughs> very sad. <laughs> what happened? Did I hit my head? 
<laughs> Some mean lady got me tied up in the future, torturing me. <laughs> would have imagined probably just about anything, but that I would have changed into a person who liked it. If you had told me when I was 20 that at the age I am today, I'd be making the amount of money I currently make, I would have shot myself in the head. <laughs> just ended it all. What's the point of living a life with such limited horizon? <laughs> But here I am, you know, don't have a lot of money to throw around, but uh, I'm a lot happier than I was when I was 20, that's for goddamn sure. I knew Alicia Rose when I was 20. Go way back. San Francisco, KUSF. Oh, yeah. I'm a lot happier than I was when I was 20. Because the things I like the most in life today, they don't cost anything anyways. They're free, most of them. The things that truly bring me pleasure, walk in the park, sunshine on my face, smell of a rose, Alicia Rose, what? <laughs> <laughs> Raise your armpit, Alicia. Let's smell you. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? It's like meeting a kitty cat on the sidewalk. Hello, it's free. <laughs> and yes, another thing that brings me a tremendous amount of pleasure that is that, you know, doesn't cost a dime is that at least once a week I have the privilege and opportunity to shove my face down, stick my mouth in front of a microphone and talk to wonderful people. <laughs> I already told you I like eating ass. I'm not going to keep going about that. <laughs> get kind of gross if I don't hurt me on that. <laughs> After a while, I get kind of horrible. Where are we at? Oh, that's nice. I want to, uh, this is just something, just to show you this is not all hyperbole. Would you just, would you just read this uh, text message? Uh, well, it's right in my face. I'm not saying that. Say I'm not saying it. Uh, maestro, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I spent my day with the woman that I was talking about who likes it so much. It was a good time. <sighs> you guys have been fantastic. I'm so honored to have been a part of this night. This is a really wonderful place, and I uh, feel blessed to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jan. Yeah.